Hello and welcome to this midweek blog. Something a bit different this week. We've got about a week and a half to the start of the river season. And I did have a question this week about river fishing and me covering something about my tips for somebody new to the rivers. So what I thought I'd do is the my top five basic tips before the start of the river season for stick float fishing. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Right, so tip number one is stick floats obviously it's a stick float video and um, general rule with stick floats is one number four per foot of water that you're in so four different types of weight to float that i would carry six number four eight number four ten number four and a 12 or a 14 number four depending and these floats obviously will cover you for most of the rivers that you're going to fish above that generally you're moving on to bollows and stuff like that um, but for stick float fishing, 6 number 4, 8 number 4, 10 number 4 and a 12 to 14. As I said, number 4 per foot of water. And they will generally cover you for all depths of rivers that you're going to fish. Carry different tops in every variety. For this one I'm just going to show you the 6 number 4. So as you can see there's two different tops there of float. A fine tip and a thicker tip float. Now generally... The two are used in different swims but generally the same depth. Say for example you've got a swim that's six foot deep, even depth, but it's fast and rocky. Your bait is going to go along on the bottom and anything it catches on is going to pull it under. This float here will pull under as soon as it touches most things on a fast paced shallow swim. So you'll be constantly, the float will be constantly getting pulled under. Whereas this one, the buoyancy in the tip will pull the weight over the bottom and allow you to fish um, a six foot, say, fast paced swim that won't allow the float to get pulled under. So you can hold it back and it'll pull the, pull the line and the weight through the swim and won't constantly get pulled under by anything it hits on the bottom. If the swim was, say, a sandy swim and there was no nothing to pull it under and it was six foot deep, I would go with this float where you can dot it right down and any little bites are going to register and it's not going to pull under. I really, When you can get away with this float, I would always use this float because it's more sensitive in the tip, especially when dace fishing. Now this question is the one that I get asked most more than any. And I would say I've done about seven or eight years of stick float fishing now. And easily there's two lines that stick out to me as being the best. For your real line, you want a line that floats and lifts easily off the water when you're mending the, the line behind the float. For that, Drennan float fish. You see it there. Is easily the best floating the boat the best real line for stick float fishing I found. It lifts easy off the water for mending the float. And yeah, what it is though, it perishes quite fast. Um, it's not real, it, the line deteriorates. So I probably would start the season, I would put that on my reel before the start of the season and probably change halfway through, um, just I don't know, around about Christmas time because it does deteriorate quite fast. The second line that you'll use is obviously your hook length material. The stuff that's gonna be below the water and I have used all high-tech type of lines in the past. And what you find is when it's coming through the water, you can have maggots top and bottom. The spinning as it comes through the water and the flow going past it will pigtail the line. Some lines are better than others, but I have had no problems with this stuff. Kamazan Bay Pearl Online, and I carry it in two varieties, 1.7 and 2.1. I use that for me, me days fishing. And, and my roach fishing and I'll use that for the chub fishing if it's really snaggy I go all the way through but these two they are pearl on it's as old as the hills but it works doesn't kink and is very strong and they're the two real lines that I will use for all my hook lengths for the start of the year while I'm going over the line obviously I'll cover the reel in the same bit 
your reel, and that's the reel that I use. And one tip that I would say is that you can put backing on your reel um, to bulk it out. But one thing, don't I don't tie a loop to loop to connect it. I put tape around, and then the last bit, the start of the end of the line, I put under the last bit of tape, and then start reeling the line on the top. What it means is. What you don't want when you stick float fishing is when you're letting line off the reel, you don't want it catching on anything. So this bit of your reel here, you want the line right to the tip. As you can see with this one, I've had a year's worth of fishing, but you want it on the tip, right the full spool. So when you've got your line like that, and your bail arms off and you're letting line off as your float goes down, you don't want it catching, you want it as smooth as possible as you're letting line off the reel. So fill the, the spool to the very tip, and make sure the circumference of your reel there is smooth. So when the line's coming off, there's no resistance on the line at all on the on the, the um, line as it's coming off the reel. And yeah, make fishing a lot easier. And yeah, that's the way I do it. Put the full spool of 100 meters on in one big go, and that way there's no knot where you've tied this together to catch. So yeah, fill the spool to the end, and make sure there's no rubbish around the, the lip of the spool. For the line to catch on. Third tip is roundabout rods. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the rods that I use. I use two different stick float rods or float rods. A 13 or a 14 foot one I've used in the past and a 17 foot one. Both rods will cover you for any river that you're going to come across in the UK really. Um, the 13 foot rod obviously more natural to a smaller river um, like the River Dane if you're up north or my 17 foot rod will be more for the River Dee or the River Mersey where you're going to get depths up to about 15, 16, 17 foot for bottle fishing etc. So the two rods that I carry 14 foot rod and a 17 foot one if you're just starting out you can get rods around about 50 pound or 60 pound I think it is that come in two different lengths they are 14 foot or you connect you know extensions up to 16 foot they're a perfect place to start if you're just learning river fishing and you don't know whether you're going to like it or not it's a nice rod that you can use that will cover you for a lot of different swims and the only thing you really benefit by paying more money is obviously when you stick float fishing you're holding that rod all day like with poles the more money you spend the lighter the rod and the better the action i do it every week so um I get a rod that's you know 17 foot and it's quite light one thing i would say is don't think a 13 foot rod is always the best rod for the small river i will fish a 17 foot rod on a small river if the swim lets me get away with it fish the longest rod you can get away with because the longer the rod the, you know you want to be getting right behind that float as it's going down you know, the more the longer you've got, the more line you can hold off the water and the more control. You want as little amount of line touching that water between your rod tip and that float as possible. And that way the float will go straight down the swim in a line that you want it to go down. If you want to hold it back, there's less line to hold off. So you can hold that float right back, let it go. And the longer rod will give you more control over that float as it's going down the river. So yeah, the best thing you can do is, have, you know, have either two rods or a rod that covers both lengths and fish the longest rod you can possibly get away with for the swim that you're in because it will give you more control and will make stick float fishing a lot easier for you so yeah that's my tips on on rods for the river season right tip number four weights and plummets um, i'll start with depth plummets now, one thing that I do see a lot on the river is people not using a plummet that's um, heavy enough for river fishing. Now, with the float fishing, you'd get away with something like that. A little small depth plummet, and that will do you for the river, you know, for, for sorry, for lakes and ponds on the, on the pole. That will sit on the bottom and give you the depth of the swim. That on the, any river, you, what you don't want is when you're plumbing up on a river... For the plummet to move in the flow it's got to hold its weight in the flow so i would compared to that one i would use something more like like that a lot heavier 
the nut and the, sur the surface area of that will hold the bottom a lot better. The river's going to go across that and it's going to hold in the flow. And you want one like that's heavy enough to hold bottom in the swim. You don't want it moving, you want a, a true representation of the depth. Now, fine tuning your depth on the river isn't really important. You'll learn that as you, as you fish the swim, you will learn how to fish each, each swim, you, swim you're in. The depth plummet is there to give you a general depth all the way down the swim. So you've got an idea of, say, if it's five foot at the start and four foot at the end. You'll learn as you fish it the bits where you, you want to hold back. So if you were, say, pole fishing, you would want a, a finely tuned depth. So you'd want it finely tuned if you were fishing bottom to the millimetre sometimes. With river fishing, you just want a general depth. And as you fish it, you'll learn where to hold back to get it over the shallow bits or the shallower bits or little bits of, um, you know, snags in the swim, etc. So, yeah, fine-tuning your depth isn't important, but actually finding a depth to start with is, and for that, you need a plummet that is heavy enough to hold bottom. Right, general weights. I carry number fours, number tens generally, but I also, which is just a norm for, you know, setting the float, but I also carry a selection of smaller weights, 11s, all the way down to 8s. And what that allows you to do is, especially when you're dace fishing, say this is a 6 number 4, and 5 number 4 takes you to the to the the um, the red on the float. Sometimes it's re really fine bites that you're hitting, and you might want to dot it right down, so it's literally, literally that. As you can see at the bottom of the screen there, just the tip of the float, and that's where your fine tuning shots will come in into play. So yeah, carry a good selection of weights and so you can set the flow as sensitive as you possibly can on the swim that you're in. Before the river is open, you want to be doing as much um prep as possible, and for that, um the EA website will give you the levels of the river that you're going to fish. You can find levels all the way down its course and there'll be EA stations all the way down. Get to learn um, your river stations and more importantly get to learn how long they take to rise and how long they take to fall. So it, it might, well, some rivers might take a day to get into flood but they might only take a day to come out of flood. Other rivers we might stay in flood for four or five days and take a week before the fishable again. These are all things that you will need to learn about the river and I'll put a picture on now of a typical EA level site. As you can see from that picture, it shows you the level of the river in metres normally and the location down the bank. Them two things will help you over time to learn the river that you're fishing and you'll get to learn how that river behaves and if you've got a number of rivers knowing how long they all take to rise and fall you can pick the right river for the day that you're going fishing and that is you know can be key sometimes for stick float fishing because your margin for a river being fishable is a lot smaller if you just stick float fishing all the time so yeah definitely check out the EA site and for the last tip, we will have to go onto the river bank. So I'll catch you on the bank in the next clip. You don't want to be turning up on the 16th of June, um, not even seeing the river. I've never seen this bit of the river before, but I'll be coming here early season. So get a pair of polarized sunglasses and in barbell your game, you know, have a look over the shallows. But what you'd be looking for for stick float fishing is the deeper water. I will do a video on on um like what i look for on a river you know when i'm fishing it and a bit on watercraft and you know basic watercraft but yeah i'll pan the camera around and i'll have a talk through just a simple thing what i'll be looking for here right really quickly i've, I've hit the first bend and as you can see up there really shallow you wouldn't really stick float fish up there but what i like the look of here if you're fishing you know, if you found somewhere to stand down there, can you see how the colour of the bottom disappears and you're into deep water? And this here 
is good area. If you could get in on that far bank over there and cast across, you can't see the bottom anywhere here. And there's plenty of fish holding features. And yeah, that's just a bait, you know, tip five, spend time on the bank. I've been here on the river now, even stretches I've been before two or three times since the, you know, before the season started. This one, it's my first time and already, when I come here on the opening day, I know within 20 yards of the car park, there's a good spot. So yeah, there we go. Tip number five, spend time on the bank before the 16th. So yeah, that's my um, top five um, top tips, you know, before the season starts for the, the river on the stick bloat. Um, I hope you find them useful. Um, tight lines in, in your river fishing this year. And yeah, two weeks to go, I can't wait. I'll leave you. With this swim, it's the bottom end of the stretch. I've walked all the way down. Boiling not day, but look at that for the swim. Plenty of cover. Even even depth, you can't see the bottom. And it's got a snag right down the bottom of it as well. So that shows what when it come opening day. I know there's a decent swim right at the bottom end. So yeah, tight lines and I'll catch us all later.